What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. It is the opening day of MLB. We're very excited. Uh, I didn't think this day would ever come. Normally, the video is going to be a little bit different than what it's going to be today. But as of the making of this video, Baseball Savant is not working for whatever reason. So today's going to be different. We're going to try it this way. If you like it this way, we can continue. If you check out our playlist and see how we did them last year, it might be a little bit different. Let me know your thoughts on that. Those videos from last year were anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour long. If you've got that kind of time for MLB, that's completely fine. If you want it shortened to the point, that's great too. If the video, if this video is all you need, that's awesome. But if you do need a boost, we do have FTA, fantasyteamadvisors.com. On the MLB, we have player projections. We have Vegas odds. We have batter splits, BVP matchups, stolen base targets, our cheat sheet. Our cheat sheet includes six to seven, normally, six to seven uh, players at pitcher, catcher, first, second, third, shortstop, and then like 14 outfielders for cash. And then the same thing for tournaments. Then we got the, our favorite stacks that we like. So we've got a ton of information on, on the cheat sheet. Uh, we've got prop bets, which you guys can check out. We've got stat ratings for the ballparks. we got umpire factors that take into effect uh, what they do when they're in the game. Then we have our optimal stacks that you can look at uh, depending on the, the size of the slate. So that being said, uh, Baseball Savant is not showing probable pitchers right now. It's down for whatever reason. We just were able to see it. So you can see these games and you can preview the matchup here, um, which we will look at for the batters, but we can't look at the pitching for whatever reason. The pitching's not up yet. So we will look at BVP at the end. We will check out a lot of things. So what we're first going to do is we're going to go over each slate. So I hate this, but it is split up into three slates. It's the early slate, the main slate, and then the late slate. So we're going to look at what the projections, what the uh, simulations have said about that. So we'll do that. Then we will look at each game we look at the bats that we like in each game as well. So we'll look at that. Then at the end, we will look at uh, bets, batters we think are going to hit home runs. Uh, if you do prop bets, we will look at some of the prop bets as well. So that being said, new to the channel, you're in for a treat. We try to have a giveaway every single day. Every single day, we try to have two giveaways, actually. The first one's, they're both very easy, but the first one, like this video, be a YouTube subscriber here and hit the bell notification and leave a comment for the comment picker. If we get 50 likes on the video, someone will randomly win a weekly pass to FTA+. Plus. If we get 100 likes, someone will win a free month, 125 likes, a free year. And if we ever get 150 or more likes, someone will win a lifetime pass worth $500 for only liking a video, subscribing to the channel, and leaving a comment. The second giveaway, like the video, be a subscriber, same thing, but tell me who is going to hit a home run, the inning they're going to hit it in, and the distance traveled. You get the player and the inning correct. The distance traveled is just a tiebreaker if there's multiple people with it. Multiple people can win a day, but if you get it correct with the inning and the player, we're gonna give you a free week of content. If you get it exactly correct with the travel distance of the ball, you're gonna get a free month of FTA+. So a lot of things to go over. In the description of the video will be our Discord channel where we go about core plays, we go value plays, we answer questions for you. We'll also have the article that matches the day's slate. So let's get started. So from when I when I pause the video to check something out, and depending on when you watch this, both Milwaukee the versus the Mets and Atlanta versus Philly have been postponed. So I don't even think there's going to be an early slate. It's literally Baltimore and L.A. Uh, you, we can't play this early one. So this one's off the table already, which is wild. I've never seen that before. But these two games have already been postponed. So there is no early slate, I guess. Um, this They might change this to one of those single games, which we're not going to cover. We're only going to cover the main game. So let me refresh just to make sure this is correct, too. Okay, so far, so good. So we're there. So we will dig into the main slate starting at 310 East. Okay, so normally we're going to go through game by game with the pitching when 
Baseball Savant is working properly. It is not working properly right now. So making this video gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to, but we're gonna try and change it up a little bit. So we see all the pitchers on this slate that are current. Obviously things can change, but we've gone ahead, we've done projections, we've run simulations, and I kind of want to show you in the order that we like pitching wise. So really like Tariq Skubal as the number one pitcher on this slate. Uh, his matchup against the White Sox, um, a fantastic matchup. We look at this, uh, he's got, as of now, projected as the highest pitcher. Obviously, anything can change, a no-hitter can happen, but we've got him number one pitcher. Number two is Tyler Glass now here against St. Louis. St. Louis is just, they're not good, they're very bad, um, and I think we're going to see how bad they are. And we saw what Glass now did, pitched 77 pitches um, in South Korea. I think he does more than that if, as long as he stays healthy, so I really like him there. Um, at number two. Number three, we've got Jesus Lazardo um, down here against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's just not that good of a team. I don't trust them enough. We've got him at number uh, three for Lazardo. Number four, I've got uh, projected out is you Darvish here at 8,200. Um, I, I, we saw what he did. He only went, what, 3.2 innings in Korea, but I, for whatever reason, um, he obviously, obviously going up against the Dodgers. Dodgers are a really good team. San Francisco, while they are a good team and they've added bats to this, San Diego is still a pitcher's park. So that is a plus to you, Darvish. Number five is Pablo Lopez um, in Kansas City. So the wind is blowing out in Kansas City, but Kansas City is not that really good of a team. They've got Bobby Witt Jr., Sal Perez, um, MJ Melendez. Name me some more, unless you're a Kansas City guy. Uh, Kansas City is a pitcher's park, so we are usually we're, we love to take pitchers in Kansas City. The wind is blowing out to left in this one, but it, it is a boost to Pablo Lopez here against Kansas City. Uh, number five is Cole Reagans in that same matchup. A good matchup. Absolutely love what Cole Reagans brought to the table here. Um, he's at 8,700. That's the top five pitching there. I would still look at other pitching, um, but those are our top that we like. Um, or those are top top six. Um, if you want to go top 10 at each position, we can absolutely do that right now. Things are subject to change. So in the description, like I said, is our Discord channel. If there are other news, notes, players that have changed, value that opens up throughout the day, that is when we'll throw them into the Discord channel. So um, number seven is Logan Webb here. So I've got Logan Webb against San Diego. San Diego, we still don't know who San Diego, who they are. Um, are they going to hit well? Are they not? So they put up a ton of runs in the second game of that, but it just, I don't know what we're going to see, um, out of them, but Logan Webb, I absolutely love Logan Webb in San Diego. Number eight is actually, uh, Zach Eflin here going up against Toronto. We know what Toronto does. It's in Tampa Bay. It's more of a pitcher's park. It's an ugly ballpark. We've got him there. Next one is Mitch Keller. Um, Mitch Keller against Miami. Miami just traded the Yankees' John Birdie. Miami is Miami. We don't know. I mean, they lost Soler. I mean, they lost some batters there. So Mitch Keller here, I really don't mind. And number 10 that I kind of like for tournaments only is Frankie Montas against Washington. We kind of saw what he did last year uh, for the Yankees in a, in a start. Uh, the one start against Kansas City, only 1.1 innings. Um, we didn't see much out of him. 7.2 fantasy points and 1.1 inning. Um, he's 6,300. He is cheap. It is Washington. This is Great American Small Park, though. So he is a tournament-only option. So Great American Small Park, as you know, loves to give up some home runs. Um, and that's what we've got. There's still other options that I would look at. Um, these, it's not. I'm not saying I'm, I don't like these other pitchers. Valdez has projected out with simulations projected to have the most amount of strikeouts in this game but the yankees righties they can hit juan soto on top of that there's a lot of hitters that can put up a ton of runs on valdez and take him out early in the game and i don't think i want to pay eight thousand for him so that's what we've got for the pitcher um for catching options what we're looking for that i would use in order um Will Smith just signed a four, uh, a ten-year contract. As I'm making this video, 140 million. Um, got him as number one there. Uh, number two, 
I do have Sal Perez. We're looking at him. Um, pretty good in this matchup here. Uh, but again, if you're going with Pablo Lopez, obviously you go away from looking at Kansas City. I mean, really with Kansas City, you have, like I said, there's not that many great bats. Bobby Witt obviously is the number one there. Um, number three would be Wilson Contreras. I, or that's, yeah, Wilson Contreras against Glass now. Hopefully Glass now does well. Um, but again, I, it is a crapshoot for uh, catchers. There's not a ton. It's basically you see these guys, and then who do you want to go with? Um, number four, I would look at Tyler Stevenson in Great American Small Park against uh, Josiah Gray. And then number five, I'm looking at Kybert Ruiz against Montas. Um, 3,700 there. First base wise, Otani's up there. Uh, we we saw what he did in Korea. We know the whole allegation, the whole um, weather. And I don't think this. Uh, I I get, we'll just say allegation right now. I don't think it's going to affect him, but we'll see. They're doing an investigation. I don't know at any time. I guess they could pull him off, which would make sense. Uh, but I've got Otani number one first baseman right now. Number two is Freddie Freeman in this matchup. I do like them. Those are the two most expensive guys. Number three is actually, um, let's find him, is Candelario. Down here, first base and third base eligible at 4,200. Love me some Candelario here against John Gray, or Josiah Gray. He is going up against his old team. Number four is actually Yandy Diaz. Um, got him projected right around nine fantasy points. Obviously, anything can change. Baseball is very hard to project, but looking at simulations, looking at everything, these are how they have uh, projected out after 10,000 simulations. So in these videos, we've done 10,000 simulations. By the end of the day, we will have updated all of those. It'll be 20,000 simulations. So those simulations on there are after 20,000 simulations. So the first initial batch that we run are only 10,000. So that's why I tell you, this video is a great starting point. But if you go to fantasyteamadvisors.com and you look at all of the content we have on there, those are all updated about an hour or two before first pitch. That is where anything that has been updated from this video, from all news and notes, weather, then we take into effect the once the umpires are announced, uh, you can kind of see some umpires affect pitching, some umpire, umpires affect batting. That is where we can we update them, and things do end up um, being updated towards the end of the day. That is why I tell you, don't just rely on these videos. You need everything. Baseball is one of those where you need to go in depth as much as humanly possible. Uh, number five is. Uh, for us right now, Vlad. So he is the third highest priced guy. Disparity here being uh, number five, probably not going to use a ton of them because again, Eflin is in a good spot here against Toronto. Number six is Spencer Torkelson here against Crochet. I just don't trust him enough. Um, the wind is blowing out in this ballpark. And uh, yeah, I, I like a Detroit mini stack here. Um, number seven is Spencer Steer. So if we look at Spencer Steer going up against Gray, 4,700. I've got him at number seven. Number eight. So this is where it's kind of weird. Um, because with this, Salvador Perez is both first base and catcher eligible. Um, so that's kind of where you're going to see some of the disparity because the multi-position eligibility will change it up a little bit. So since we've already talked about him being a catcher, we will go away from him and look at the next one, which would be uh, Carlos Santana. I would look at Carlos Santana here. Um, and you come down. You keep coming down. He is 3,900 going up against Cole Reagans. Switch hitter. Um, so he could. Uh, he's played in this ballpark a lot. So he, he could definitely be there. He's going to be a cheaper option at 3,900. Next one would be Jose Abreu um, against, I, I always keep forgetting he's in Houston, against Cortez. Cortez is prone to give up the long ball, especially against a, left, uh, against a righty bat. So that's something to look at. Paul Goldschmidt is another one I would look at. You're, you're going to be paying a premium for him against Glass now. Um, but it's there's not a ton of great options for St. Louis. And then the last one is Justin Turner. We've got him going up against Zach Eflin in Tampa Bay. Second base wise, I, I don't think it's going to be a surprise. 
Mookie Betts number one. I could honestly see him. Um, honestly, I could see Mookie Betts winning the MVP this year. We saw what he did in his went, went uh, four for five in the second game. Six RBIs, I believe. I mean, he's an RBI machine. Going up against Miles Miklas, do not sleep on the LA being the number one stack on this slate. I absolutely love Mookie Betts there at number one. Number two is Jose Altuve. Love me some Jose here against again against the lefty. I wouldn't be surprised if Jose leads the game off, leads the bottom of the first off with a home run. Would not surprise me in the least. And number three is actually Jonathan India. We've got him at thirty nine hundred. I love this matchup for him. Number four is Glaber Torres. Love Glaber Torres. He's got great numbers. I would love him even more if he led off. So when you're looking for baseball, you're looking for those starting uh, lineups. You want to focus when you're building stacks. You want to focus on like the first five or six guys because they're going to get the most at bats in a game theoretically. If and they have kind of toyed with Glaber leading off, it kind of just depends. If either he leads off or he bats like fifth. You're going to have all those guys in front of you. So definitely like where he's at, but it projected wise, love him a lot if he's uh, leading off. Number five is Brandon Lau down here against Jose Barrios. Barrios last year, Jekyll and Hyde, really good games, then got absolutely smoked in some of these games. So I do have uh, Brandon Lau at number five. Number six is Luis Arise. Uh, we on base machine, hitting machine. We know what we're getting out of him. So I'm surprised he's only 4,500 going up against Mitch Keller. Love me some Luis Arise. Number six is Nolan Gorman that I love. Number seven is Jake Cronenworth. Eight is Hassan Kim. Nine is Tyro Estrada. And number 10 is Brendan Donovan. Moving to the third base side here. I love Max Muncy against Miles Mikolas. I've got him number one. I've got Machado number two. I've got uh, Royce Lewis number three. Alex Bregman number four. Nolan Arenado number five. Cabrian Hayes six. Matt Chapman seven. Jake Berger eight. Isaac Paredes number nine. And Nolan or uh, Gio Urshela number ten. If Gio actually starts, don't know if he's going to be the starting third baseman unless it's been announced. Yeah, he had yet to lock it. Have not heard anything right now. So if Gio and Gio's one that I name that I've heard that he could get traded. So this is definitely something to look at. Um, but I do have Gio as of now being number uh, ten third base. Move to shortstop. Ellie De La Cruz is my number one. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. is number two. Uh, number three is uh, Xander Bogarts. Four is C.J. Abrams. Five is Carlos Correa. Six is Bo Bichette. Seven is uh, Tim Anderson right now, just due to the matchup. Number eight is Anthony Volpe. Nine is Kyle Farmer. And 10 is uh, Paul DeYoung. So just kind of looking at those, like I don't really like O'Neal Cruz here. I love Lizardo. Um, Then you get just other ones where it's wild to see Tim Anderson here. He did struggle mightily last year, but he's coming off a batting title the year before. He's still good. I just It was just a weird year for him. So then we get to the outfield. Um, depending on what you're using, if you're not using Otani for first base, he's there. Mookie Betts would be one, Otani would be two. But if let's, we've already used them, so let's go in the order that we like. So number one outfield, Jordan Alvarez. He's going to be expensive. A left, it's a lefty on lefty matchup for him. He still murders. So I, I like that. Number two is Aaron Judge. Number three is Kyle Tucker, lefty on lefty matchup. He still hits lefties well. Number four is Juan Soto, another lefty-on-lefty matchup. Some people like lefty-on-righty. I like Juan Soto, number four. Number five is Byron Buxton. He is great when he is healthy. Byron Buxton, healthy as of now, could get hurt in this game. Um, But I've got him there. Number six is Fernando Tatis Jr. Kind of quiet the first two games, but now he's back in this matchup. I do like Fernando Tatis Jr. here. Six is uh, Jazz Chisholm. Uh, Seven is Jake Fraley. Eight is Randy Arozarena. Nine is Riley Green. And 10, as of now, through 10,000 simulations, is George Springer. Now, again, these can change. They probably will change. But we wanted to bring you some of this information and some of our uh, rankings right now. Okay, so now we're going to cover the night slate or the late slate, whichever one it's called, the Cleveland, Oakland, Colorado, Arizona, and Boston, Seattle slate that is on there. So we will give you the rankings there. And then after that, we're going to go over every single game with batting that we like. So 
Number one, Zach Gallen. I, I like him here. He is expensive. It is in Arizona, but Colorado is not that good of a team. Number two is Luis Castillo. Three is Shane Bieber. Four is Brian Bayo. I mean, it's it's five is Alex Wood, and then six is Freeland. It's basically in the same order. There is a reason that they are priced the way they are. I would probably not be using Alex Wood. I wouldn't be using Freeland. Stacking-wise, I'm stacking Arizona, my number one stack. Um, number two stack is probably probably Boston in this one. Um, so yeah, so in the order, the pitchers I would use in this slate, Bayo and up, but it's probably Gallon, Castillo, and Bieber for me. Oakland, I mean, you want to take a pitcher in Oakland, it's a guarantee to be dominant. Shane Bieber also definitely helps uh, that situation out there. In order of uh, catchers that we like, I love Gabriel Moreno. I, I love that matchup for him against a lefty in Freeland. I drafted him in my season-long league uh, for sure. Yeah, I absolutely love Gabe, uh, Moreno for number one. Number two is Mitch Garver here against Bayo. Um, we saw what he did with Texas, won the World Series. Now he's with Seattle. Love me some Mitch Garver. Number three is Cal Raleigh here against Brian Bayo. Number four is Bo Naylor here against Alex Wood. And number five is Elias Diaz here against Zach Gallen. Looking at first base, number one, Christian Walker against... Uh, you want to take Christian Walker against a lefty, especially at home in this ballpark. Christian Walker against Freeland. Number two is actually Josh Naylor against Alex Wood. Love me some Josh Naylor here for first base. Number three is Ryan Noda here against Bieber. Number four is Tristan Casas against Castillo. And number five is Chris Bryant going up against Zach Gallen. Second base wise, Cattell Marte has, I love Cattell Marte, switch hitter, going up against Kyle Freeland, probably batting leadoff. Give me all the Cattell Marte in this. Zach Giloff is number two. Number three is actually Jorge Polanco uh, for Seattle against Bayo. Uh, number four is Andres Jimenez against Alex Wood. And number five is Brendan Rogers against Zach Gallen. Third base ranked, Jose Ramirez, I, switch hitter, always on base, always love what Jose Ramirez brings to the team. Extra base hits, stolen bases, doesn't matter. Hustles, great defense as well. Got him number one for third base. Number two is Devers against Castillo. Um, love me some Devers here. Number three is Eugenio Suarez, just coming over to Arizona. Uh, love this matchup against the lefty here. Number four is Ryan McMahon. Um, going up against Gallon. And number five, if he starts, uh, Emmanuel Rivera against Kyle Freeland. Number six, or sorry, shortstops. Sorry. Shortstops. JP Crawford's my number one here against uh, Brian Bayo. Number two is Trevor Story. Flip side of that against Castillo. Number three is Geraldo Perdoma. Love me some Perdoma, especially against Freeland. Number four is Ezekiel Tovar. And number five is Gabriel Arias against Alex Wood. Then outfield-wise. Corbin Carroll, don't care if it's a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. Rookie of the year, dominant. Everything you want out of an uh, outfielder. Corbin Carroll there at number one. Number two is Julio Rodriguez against Bayo. Number three is Lord, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Uh, love this matchup. A lefty, I love him against lefties. You, and he's a further down the list. So in a smaller slate like this, probably goes a little bit under-owned. Uh, number four is Stephen Kwan. Number five is Nolan Jones. Six is Ramon Laureano. Seven is Jaron Duran. Uh, eight is Charlie Blackman. Nine is Tyler O'Neill in the new lineup here for Boston. And number 10 is Brent Rooker going up against Shane Bieber. So those are the rankings for both the main slate and this night slate here on DraftKings. Let's take a look at bats in all of these games, though. Overall, um, you, you want the ones that are dark red going up against here. Okay? So Mike Trout makes sense for LA. Taylor Ward makes sense. Um, Ohapi would make sense. Rendon a little bit okay. Brandon Drury... A little bit okay, but there's not a ton to like in this matchup. Flip side of that, Orioles, you can pretty much throw anyone um, against Patrick Sandoval there, and I wouldn't blame you at all. So 
I mean, the, you want all the dark red. So Gunnar Henderson, Ryan O'Hearn, Ryan Mountcastle. Sa love me some Santander. Austin Hayes actually has a good matchup. I don't trust the blue here. I like that matchup for him. Adley Rushman, I would be looking at him as well. Um, I uh, Baltimore stack is what you would look at. But again, this is probably a single only game now that the early slate has one game. So we go off of that one. Go here. Look at the Washington Cincy. Joey Gallo. Forgot he was on Washington. Wouldn't look at Joey Gallo. I mean, there's really not a lot that I like in this, this Washington team. I don't think I'll have anyone here. Um, to be completely honest with you, if you pulled my leg and said, hey, get who's three people, I would look at Lane Thomas, Eddie Rosario, Kyber Ruiz maybe. I, I don't like, I do not like Washington bats tonight. Cincy bats, Ellie De La Cruz I absolutely love. Um, Jonathan India is in a good matchup. Tyler Stevenson, um, Spencer Steer, Candelario. I would look at a Cincy stack there. Those would be the bats that I'd use in that one. Go to the next game. We've got San Francisco versus San Diego. Again, I love Logan Webb, so um, not a ton of Padres bats I would use. San Francisco bats against Darvish. Matt Chapman has some great numbers there. Um, Jorge Soler. Love me some Jorge Soler more against lefties, but he's in a matchup there. Uh, Yastrzemski is there. I would look at Lamont Wade Jr. came on strong for us last year. We used him a lot. That's probably it for San Francisco. Uh, San Diego wise, Jackson Merrill. Uh, don't know a ton about him, but in the game, I mean, he doesn't have a ton of matchups, so we kind of know that. Um, batted ball events, only five of them. That's what you see. So batted ball events, um, meaning how many times he's actually hit the ball, the hard hit rate. That's why those numbers come into play. Obviously, don't have a ton for Merrill. Cheaper option, though. Tyler Wade, if he starts, would be a cheaper option. Love me some Tatis, Bogarts. Kim, Cronenworth, Machado, those would be the ones I'd use in this game. Next game, St. Louis versus the Dodgers. Uh, probably, I mean, Contreras, Gorman, Goldschmidt, and Arenado would be the ones I would use for St. Louis. But outside of that, I'm L.A. Freeman, Otani, Betts, I mean, Will Smith. You can be looking at that. Max Muncy, those would be the bats that I'd use there. So yeah, a full Dodger stack. But it's going to be very hard to stack the Dodgers every single game. Toronto versus Tampa Bay. You've got Barrios versus Eflin. So we look at this. Vlad is in a good matchup. Bo Bichette's in a good matchup. Justin Turner. Um, probably be the only ones I use there. Yeah, I mean, George Springer would be another one that I'd look at. Flip side for Tampa Bay against Barrios. It depends on which Barrios we get, like I mentioned earlier. But Yandy Diaz, Brandon Lau, a Rosarena, um, I would look at them. That's probably it. I don't trust anyone else right now. So those three would be what I'd look at. Uh, the next one, Lopez versus Reagans, Minnesota at Kansas City. It is a pitcher's park, bat-wise. Max Kepler, I'm probably not looking at lefty. Uh, Brian, Byron Buxton against the lefty, like I said, love me some Byron Buxton today. Royce Lewis, I would look at. Edward Julian, I don't mind. Correa, lefty, righty on lefty matchup. But I still like Reagans a little bit more than I would. If you are taking some bats, those would be the ones I'd look at. Kansas City Royals bats that I'd look at. Garcia, Melendez, Bobby Witt Jr., Sal Perez would be the only ones that I would even consider for that game. Then we got Detroit versus Chicago White Sox. Um, I'm taking Tariq Skubal. I don't want, I honestly don't want any White Sox bats. Um, if you want to go buck the trend and go against that, I would take righty bats, but I'm not. Um, so it would be like Lou Bob, it would be Eloy, Andrew Vaughn, but I'm not. I'm taking Tariq Skubal. I want all the Tariq Skubal. Um, Tigers bats, though, Torkelson, Green, Kerry Carpenter would make sense. Parker Meadows, if he plays. Uh, Gio Urshela, if he starts, but again, he might not even, uh, he might only be the backup. Those would be the ones that I'd look at for Detroit. Pirates 
So Keller versus Lazardo versus Miami, like we've already talked about. So we have covered some of this, but I wanted to just bring show you guys in actual pictures the bats. Um, I'm probably going with Lazardo here. So Pirates bats, I really don't want any. If you were to take Pirates bats, Cabrian Hayes. Honestly, I'm not. I, I'm going. I, I'm on Team Lazardo here, and I'm not looking at Pirate bats. Uh, Miami bats. Jesus Sanchez, maybe a little bit. Jazz, Josh Bell, Luis Arise is probably the only way, only place I go there. Um, preview wise, Nestor Cortez versus Framber Valdez, depending on uh, who you feel comfortable with here. But again, I mean, there's so many bats that I like for the Yankees. Uh, I do think they could, each one could strike out, and we could see Valdez with strikeout numbers here, but. I'm still looking at Aaron Judge. Fantastic numbers here against lefties. Look at this red. I mean, ridiculous. Uh, Stanton. Soto. Stanton's looking better. Soto there. Um, Glaber Torres, I would look at. Volpe against the lefty, I do like. Um, Verdugo actually has really good numbers against lefties, so you could look at Verdugo. Uh, Rizzo, because he's been looking pretty good this spring, um, you could look at there. I, it just depends. I think Austin Wells probably gets the start, but Ter uh, Jose Trevino against the lefty, I could see as well. Those would be the bats that I'd look at. Um, it's going to be expensive, though, but those would be the bats. And then Astros bats, I'd look Jordan against lefty. I love lefty on lefty. Kyle Tucker, I'm looking at. Bregman, um, the little midget, Jose Altuve. I would look at Jose Altuve as well. Chicago versus Texas. This one isn't even on the slate. You can't even play this game. Yeah, we can't even play this game. It's not on either of them. So we're going to go away from that. So Cleveland versus o Oakland. Um, I love me some Bieber. I love Bieber. I'm not taking any of the A's bats. I'm looking at Cleveland bats a little bit. Arias, uh, Jose Ramirez, Josh Naylor, Ramon Laureano. You could look at Bo Naylor as well. I love the Naylor boys. Um, Floreal, I don't think he plays. Um, but... I, big, big Jose Ramirez, but I'm looking at Shane Bieber in this one. I'm not looking at any of the A's bats. I don't trust them. I, I don't trust them at all. Colorado versus Arizona. We've got uh, Rockies bats against Zach Gallen. I don't really want a ton of Rockies bats. I mean, you could look at Ryan McMahon. You could look at Brendan Rodgers and Charlie Blackman and Chris Bryant, but I'd rather go Zach Gallen. And then Diamondbacks as a stack against Freeland. Cattell Marte is my number one. Corbin Carroll there. Gabriel Moreno. I absolutely love Gabriel Moreno. Grichuk actually hits lefties well, but I don't even know if he made the team. Um, but yeah, I would look at uh, Cattell Marte, A. Eugenio Suarez, Corbin Carroll, Moreno, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. for the Diamondbacks. And then the final game, Boston versus Seattle. Devers, Casas, Jaron, Tyler O'Neill, I would look at uh, Yoshida. I don't mind a little bit of Yoshida. That's probably the where I'd go there. And then Mariners bats, Julio, I would look at Mitch Mitch Garver. I would look at Cal Raleigh, um, J.P. Crawford. That's probably it for them. Maybe a little bit of Jorge Polanco as well. So there you have it. Those are the pitching in the ranking order. Those are the bats in the ranking order. And then we broke down each batter that we like again our rankings our simulations are through 10,000 simulations At the end of the day we will have 20,000 simulations we will have everything on the website here player projections with dvp everything there uh, our bvp we'll have vegas odds batter splits those are all there though half of these are already live on the website let me check real quick I did forget to mention, if you've been with us for NBA, you kind of know uh, what we have, but we are going to be bringing MLB DFS chalk. So the DFS chalk will be there. So if you play cash games, you kind of want to stick with the chalk. If you play tournament games, you kind of want to go away from the chalk, but still take players that are there uh, projection-wise, lower ownership, but higher uh, fantasy point projection-wise. Now, again, like I said, MLB projections are very, very difficult to actually project NBA is pretty damn easy to project, and you're kind of close. MLB is a little bit different. So that is the difference there. But I do want to end this with 
players that I think could hit a home run or so a lot of people, a lot of you sports bet. We put a lot of sports bet out during the week. Every day I put, I try to put like a three player home run parlay or uh, extra base hit par- over one and a half bases kind of parlay. So these are the players that I think will hit. They have the best chance as of now. Uh, Shohei Otani against Mikolas, Devers against Castillo, Mookie Betts against Mikolas. Uh, four is Glaber Torres versus Valdez. Number five is Jordan Alvarez versus Cortez. Six is Nolan Jones versus Gallen. Seven is Spencer Torkelson versus Crochet. Eight is Christian Walker against Freeland. Nine is Santander versus uh, Patrick Sandoval. Oh, that one's gone. Er, pa- against Patrick Sandoval. And 10 is Juan Soto versus Valdez. So that is it for the video. Hopefully you found it informative. Tomorrow's video and so on and so forth probably be a little bit different. Uh, hopefully Baseball Savant is up by then. So it'll look different. It'll look a lot cleaner on the screen. But I wanted to bring you this as early as possible to help you start building your lineups. So go check that out. Go check out all we have to offer on fantasyteamadvisors.com. PGA starts today. Uh, NBA is still going on. NASCAR this weekend. MLB is here, like we said. FTA Plus, $24.99 a month. Includes sports betting and DFS. If you use the promo code MLBVIP, all one word, all capital letters, under the yearly pass, instead of $199 for a year, you can get it for $75 while supplies last that's what i've got in this video good luck on your first day of mlb and come back tomorrow let's bring home some bacon peace